Yeah! We're doing it! We're doing it! We're going early. I don't care what anybody says. Because I, I guess we could do that here. Hi, everybody! Oh, thank you so much for coming. Man! Look, y'all! Am I too loud? Am I too loud? We're doing it! Jesus Christ! Yes, I am. I'm too loud. I'm so excited, though, you guys. It's been forever. It's been forever since I've been live with you guys. Ugh. You all, look, man. That stupid strep throat. Look, and I know it was strep because I had those pockets on the back of my throat. It was so nasty, y'all. It was so nasty. I've never been so sick for so long. It was like, like, I've been sicker before, but not for that long. It lasted nearly two dang weeks. It was pure misery. How is everybody today? Lindsay, Maggie, Double T, uh, Renato, Renato, I think I, I hope I said that right. Uh, Shannon, hello. Uh, just had an afternoon of Tarya and Nightwish, non gap now gone back to goosebumps with floor man i can't believe how pa how fast these uh, past 12 years have gone not saying taria was bad but you can't beat floor you know i agree i taria had her era annette had that circus like imaginarium uh era and then floor came in she came in like a wrecking ball i mean you can't beat floor Janssen. That that woman's a beast, man. And you know what I did notice the similarities between Flor Janssen and Tarya is that they both have the ability to really get the crowd emotional, the listeners engaged, and they were both fully capable of bringing you to your knees and you're a crying mess, you know? Uh and I think that's amazing. <laughs> I think it's amazing. It's um Nightwish is like probably one of the best bands uh on the planet and given the fact that they've been going for 25 years, I mean, jeez, you can't even give them enough good credit, right? I did uh update my streaming room here, you guys. Let me let me show you what I got. Um by that new light, I got a new light. Uh, it's pretty cool. It goes with the sound of music or my loud ass voice. Uh, the Nightwish Human Nature tour. Uh, that was memorabilia from the New the New York show for the meet and greet VIP people, and all of them signed it. I have much more that I have to hang up. What do you guys think of the room so far, though? I've been even though I was really sick, I had to replace monitors and I had to hang stuff up. Uh, this banner that I have behind me, I got this at the Far Beyond Driven tour in 1994 of uh, from Pantera. And I've had that in my possession ever since. And it will never be in anybody else's possession. That's mine. And I actually seen them in concert and I got that at the concert. So <laughs> amazing. Uh, the YouTube silver play button, I couldn't be any more grateful for, you guys. It came February 2nd of this year, one day after my dad died. So, and then the work hard, or stay stay humble, work hard, and then it says be kind. And, of course, you can walk around uh, being mean to people, but why? What does that solve? I think being kind to people and being compassionate is the way to go. It's sickening anymore how people act in this world. Like, I watch all these crazy videos on YouTube of people just wiling out, man. Uh, people attacking people for their political views. Look, I don't care who you want to to follow music-wise, what your sexuality is, what you want to identify as. I don't care about any of those things. And I don't care about which political party that you follow. The only thing I care about is if you get all, like, attacky and shit and you're attacking people if they don't agree with you or side with you. I think that's wrong, and it's become socially acceptable today to do so. And that is, like, what the F is going on here? Why would you want to attack? Like, I don't want everybody to think the same. And although I don't agree with some people, I'm definitely not going to go out of my character and treat them like crap, man. I don't judge people based off of their religious beliefs, their race, 
their sexual orientation or uh, what political party they they choose to follow. No, no, I judge people based off how they treat me. If you're a dick to me, you best bet you're not going to get the kind Jennifer. You know, you're going to get the <laughs> F you, you know. Oh, my God, I didn't turn my lights on. I'm such a doofus. Hang on, y'all. I got one more thing to add to the room, and that is the new camera. Sorry, you guys, I still got some residual uh, ickies going on here. I figured I'd start early because I'm not doing nothing. My room's an absolute just like... I, it looks like a bomb went off here. Um, I'm selling all of this stuff that I was I was once uh, in the that uh, origami owl. Like I sold a bunch of it. I was a designer. I was actually like a senior designer. I had people underneath me. It's a Ponzi scheme for Christ's sakes. And I was my best customer. So I'm offloading all of my stock and stuff that I've had all, held, like held on to for years. I'm just like, screw this. I got to go. All right, uh, let's see. How are we in Roman? Thank you for asking, Lindsay. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, we are doing a lot better. And I want to, some people were like so like attacky on my community post. Like, ew, ew, maybe they didn't give you the antibiotics because, no, no, no. Here's what really happened. I knew exactly what I had. I had strep throat because I could see the pockets on the back of my tonsils and of my son's. And we get to the ur one urgent care that's brand new. I've never been there. Roman and I wanted both of us to be seen. And sh I didn't have his medical card. I had mine. And they were like, we're going to charge you. And then you can submit it to the insurance company, which that's a pain in itself. So, and the wait, there was two people in front of us, three hour wait. And I'm going, there's th two people here. You mean to tell me I'm going to have to sit here with a kid, a sick kid at that with a mask on? For three hours no bueno so i googled the late the other urgent care uh closest to me and they were open and i got there and nobody was there it was there was i i registered i'm already in their system as i've been going uh it's one of the healthcare systems that's uh local to me and so you're we're in the waiting room maybe eight minutes at that so i was like yay we're gonna get in we're gonna get some meds finally and we're gonna get that once over you know and, and that that real good uh examination and she's hopefully gonna tell me what i my suspicions are confirmed well we got in there they first weighed him and measured him and then weighed me and they said okay room two we go in there i get my blood pressure taken my pulse my pulse ox taken same with roman and uh the fevers or the temperatures taken and whatnot and I, I, I shit you not, the nurses were in there longer than the doctor. The doctor comes in, listens to our breathing. Oh, yeah, 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 you're congested, blah, blah, blah. Looks up, takes a light, looks in Roman's throat like this. This is how she did it. Okay, you, you, and then she looked at me and that was it. I'm like, and she was, well, there's nothing I can do about it. It's a, it's a virus and uh, there's nothing we can do about it. I'm like, um, uh. I think we need a, a culture and I think we have strep throat. No, 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 no. And she sounded sick herself. She rushed us out of there within five minutes. So I was really, very, very mad. And, and then we came home really sick. And then his doctor's office called me the next day and I'm going, uh, I was in there for five whole minutes. I was denied a throat, a throat culture from me and him. And I'm not too happy. And so she was like, well, you might as well, you know, just kind of write it out. I'm like, we need antibiotics. And nope, nope. And so luckily my mother knows people and she's got friends, you know, a, a copious amount of friends as she's a hairstylist, you know, they make good, a lot of friends. And so her friend had actually, um, we, we tell, did a, a real quick televisit, like, Hey, this is our symptoms, what have you. And he phoned us in some amoxicillin and I, I shit you not one day after taking that amoxicillin, here we are, you know, and no sore throats. My motivation is back. Like I thought I was a zombie. I felt like a zombie y'all. It was absolutely crazy. Hey, Tori Peters, Glenn Neal. Hello. Hello, Patrick. How are you, bud? Hello. Tria, hi. 
I'm Jewish and I don't personally think it's any of any of my business what religion views other have. Who cares what religious views anybody has, dude? For real though, it's like I don't care. I take a lot of different principles from all kinds of religions. May it be Judaism, Buddhism, Christianity, Catholicism, you know, and even uh Islam. And I take these principles, these moral principles, and I implement them in my life to be the best version that I could be of myself. And I, I think if somebody's going to bash somebody based off their religious beliefs, I think that makes them an asshole. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I knew, I knew of people before that I can't even say that they're people because people shouldn't act this way. That if you believed in Jesus, then you were a piece of crap and it was, they were made fun of and, and this, that, and the other. And I think that's just wrong. I just think that's wrong. I think too many people today think that they're Vikings and <laughs> it's the farthest thing from the truth. Like, I think that show Vikings has done a number on some people's psyche to make them firmly believe that they are uh, Vikings now. And it's like, um, yeah, that's like in like the 1400s, bro. Calm the fuck down. Uh, all right. What else do we have here? I have, I don't know if you guys can see it, but here, I'll move my camera. There's my picture of floor. It's a signed picture, 45 of 100. And then I have my old chair. And of course, look at that. Isn't she pretty? I have pictures of my kids uh, there on the floor. On the bottom here is the uh, concert poster for the warning band, um, the warning uh, at Flint, Michigan. That was the most outrageous show ever. I met some of the most stellar people there, got to meet the warning band. Uh, and I got some signed stuff from Sabaton and the Within Temptation, uh, Aftermath digital, uh, concert receipt that my buddy sent me. And I got the set list from the Flint, Michigan show, which it is such a near and dear show to my heart. Just like the Nightwish New York City uh, show. That was just amazing. All right. Hi, Kelly. Fornia. How are you? I feel bad for people in California, for real. You can't even put air conditioning on. Like, it's either you guys have wildfires, you have droughts, or you have, like, this governor that won't even allow you to have their your electric, and it's like, oh, my God. I just, I do, I feel bad. It's, like, craziness. All right, I got to get my uh, spreadsheet up here. All right. So we have six spots remaining open, you guys. I'm sure, Lindsay, I'm sure that... uh I'm sure that, oh, guess the main. Oh, shit. We're starting to show off with a banger. Uh, the Taria and Sharon Den Adele uh, collaborations. Angels I Walk Alone. It's an acoustic version live at Metal Fest. Uh, Within Temptation teamed up with Amy Lee from Evanescence. It was on an Instagram Live, which I missed, of course, because I'm a jerk. All right. Uh, we're going to start the show off. All right. I've talked enough, I think. And, uh, I think we, we really, um, I think we really need to get started on the music. How is everybody, by the way? I hope you're well. I'm really torn, you guys. I'm really torn as to whether or not I should go back to Blonde. I miss it. I miss it. Plus, I have those really long extensions that I really want to put back in my hair. And my hair is growing, but I'm very, that's like a security blanket for me. Oh, well. We're going to play some Nightwish, Guess Lemain, live. Uh, B.A., the Decades Tour. Decades, what a great album. Oh, my God. Uh, this is the, this is B.A. right here, in fact. There, right there. That's, that's from B.A. I think Nightwish is, uh, can't wait to see them come back to the states did you see floor's picture with her horse they like that horse took a selfie man he was like he he smiled for her i was like yeah if i was your horse i'd be smiling too all right y'all uh, let's hope that this you can hear the sound <laughs> lay -o, lay -o, lay -o, lay -o, lay -o, lay Well, what the hell happened to the video? Oh. <laughs> Hang on a minute. 
we had a hiccup. Let me make sure. Okay, we're in 1080p. I'm going to back that up a little bit because the people here had a welcome Nightwish with their national anthem, which is insanity. And then Nightwish was like, damn. BA, one of the most lively crowds, I think, out of all the Nightwish live shows that they have to offer, BA has to be one of the most just saucy ones, right? Thank you! <laughs> well, I don't just know. To say we feel very, very That's why I say BA, too, because I can't pronounce it. This is Gesselmane. 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 I've never been able to say this one either. So I'm going to say G Main. In BA. Y'all already know I can't even say Tom Pura, So whatever. Very welcome <laughs> back here in this beautiful, beautiful country. And it is good to be back. We are going to take you on a little trip down memory lane. Mm -hmm. And while we dive into our history. Shut up, Maggie. We're recording <laughs> too. For the future. So these cameras make sure that this night will last forever now. How fantastic is that? So let's make this a great, great, great special night on this bumpy road. Are you ready for some traveling with us? Are you ready, Argentina? I mean... Are you ready? Then this song is for you. Get Semini. Well, son of a biscuit eater, get semini, get semily, semily. I hate you for that, Maggie. Get semini, get, I say, I call it Seth, get, get set, get set the main. Hey, what do you love about live shows, right? You can't rewind time and make yourself not look like an asshole. Yeah. See, like I'm English speaking only. I know a little bit of Italian. A little bit of Finnish, a little bit of German, a little bit of French, a little bit of Spanish. But I'll tell you what, man. English? You would think I would know a whole lot of bit of it. But, nah. Nah. I can't say English words to save my life either. <laughs> Get seminate. I love this. Hold on, Roger Mitchell's in the house. Hey, Canuck, how are you? I hope you're well. I hope you uh, have escaped the the horrendous hurricanes. You know, with this song, I haven't, I've maybe seen this a handful of times. Not even, like, probably five, maybe, maybe five times. So what I loved about that was it's it took on that classical uh, just the classical music, and then we're gonna, of course, be Nightwish. And this being the Decades tour, uh, Decades album was a badass one. Oh, Glenn, I wish! Get Semini! You mean to tell me you guys don't say words the way you see them? You do know I have dyslexia too, right? I'm glad I didn't say some of the but whatever. Like, look, that's horrendous. I just seen your comments saying that that's where Jesus got, like, he, the business before he was crucified, man. Like, I don't care what Jesus did, man. He didn't deserve that.
the great thing about Nightwish that like other bands they do tell a story with their songs and you know i'm listening to this and get semini okay like this song wasn't played in recent times the last time they played this was in 2018 we don't get like this on of course the human nature tour uh, this isn't as, as popular as Ghost Love Score or The Greatest Show on Earth or Ever Dream. You know, the he big heavy hitters with Nightwish. So, like, unless you're watching live in BA, you're not going to be able to experience this or before, you know, anything before. And I think it tells a really rather dark tale. And uh, nothing about that that time of history was pretty it was like holy crap there's this man who was thought to be the son of god and said it was the son of god and here he was completely betrayed and by his people and they set him up for the woo and he legitimately was tortured and they did unspeakable things to Jesus Christ. Like, come on, man. What the... I never understood, like, when I was a kid growing up in a Roman Catholic family, I'm like, I'm petrified. Like, what are you... T are you serious they did that? They put a crown of thorns on him and everything. Oh, my God. They put nails in his feet and his hands and... What? You know, eh, what... A, what? I just think Nightwish to tackle something like this, you know, if they tell these amazing stories and it gets you thinking to, yeah, there these were dark times, but look at what happens. It spawned some pretty good music, you know. Oh, uh, it's hard. It's hard to see this band if for who who they were and all the band members that are are coming and going. You know, but I really am excited for their future and what the future brings for Nightwish, you know. It's, you gotta be one of those diehard fans to get it. All right, back to the music. me of too this reminds me of like fantasia like this man here oh god how how just to, 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 to see the stuff that he does in his head to piece the music together the way he does it's like he's in that movie fantasia like you hear this story and it's you get the introduction and and you get the you know the the whole first chapters and then you're getting to that climax and then you know they're kind of like it's like all kinds of just elements that are just crazy but it all makes sense <laughs> it's like wait what and this is why i think nightwish is in the class of their own and it, i think that they are one of the most heavy hitters in the music uh, business today because of this man right here and the team that they have and the, the the songwriting process from beginning to end i love it man i think by watching these documentaries and learning all that i've i have about nightwish 
it's just given me that amazing sense of just of how who they are as people and how brilliant they actually are now i've dealt with a lot of shitty bands in my day where i was forced to be around these no talent ass hacks and this is a stark difference this is what real talent looks like so imagine me my first time seeing nightwish of course my jaw is going to hit the freaking floor because I was so used to hearing this shitty music and I was introduced to this. So yeah, it was like a freaking shock to my soul. Like, what? Is this real? What? Yeah, Nightwish. <laughs> Hallelujah! My chair is shedding. my tissues out here crap <sighs> damn y'all whoo okay so this whole decades tour uh to see it like like watching nightwish concerts this is like as uh epica nightwish i've seen a couple like within temptation and then the ones like the warning as well where i didn't get bored at all like you you get so sucked in to this show even if it's two hours long you're just like wow and you want to watch you want to pay attention to those little things like how Ipu at the last guitar solo he like grimaced like he had this his whole face contorted like he was like i'm gonna play it out i got this and i'm gonna astonish everybody and he did like that man is the only man in the in the world and there are so many good guitar players out there but he is the only one that can play a guitar solo and i'm a damn mess i'm just i look at him and i'm like the the sounds that he brings out of that guitar of his you're just like oh my god man it's so beautiful nightwish gets me every goddamn time with every song what the hell's wrong with me god <laughs> and it's like look that was like the like they told the whole story with that song and it was like oh and you we had 
We had Troy playing his beautiful bazooki and Kai Hato just hitting the, the snares and then stopping when he hits the cymbals. And it was like, wait, what? Oh, it, there's so much going on. Thomas was... He has those magical fingers. He's such a great piano player, man. Oh, and then they tie it all together, and and they have like that that the, the show that they can present to us is like mind blowing. And then I see Marco, and I'm going, it's I I'm like I feel okay with his decision today. I've already grieved it. I grieved it. I'm done with the grieving process, and. I, I see how happy he was to play in front of a crowd that lively. Like Nightwish, yeah, they're almost sold out of Latin America. They will be there in a few days. And they will sell it out. 100%. Uh, Latin America loves Nightwish. And it was ever so present when you see 108 countries tuning in to a virtual concert. If they have that ability to be loved around the freaking world thank you double t oh yeah it's nightwish <laughs> it's nightwish what could you what else could you say you know but anyhow so marco's standing there loving it right i i was watching marco's body language and his facial expressions and i feel like this I feel like Marco has had so 25 years of playing in front of crowds like that, you know, and he was like, okay, I've done it time to pass the torch, you know, and I, I, I come to that. I get that closure every time I see Marco play in prior Nightwish videos. I do. I see how he loved that. And how amazing he uh, he felt on that stage. And I don't blame him for wanting to play at home. And not having a tour all over 108 different countries, if not more. You know? I think he did the right thing that was best for him. You know? Alright, let's try this and see. We have six... six spots left open this is taria featuring sharon den adele from within temptation i we'll have to see how the video quality is nightwish got me all congested again all right Uh, this song Angels was actually the very first song that I heard from Within Temptation. No thanks to Chad Rich. Well, a lot of thanks to Chad Rich. He was the one that was like, you want to see talent? You want to see somebody that's going to shock you and be like, holy shit, that's talent? Here's some Sharon in Within Temptation. And I was so like, oh, it was so amazing. And their virtual concert, the Aftermath concert, man, and Taria was there, and it was amazing. One of the best graphics I think I've ever seen. They put a lot of CGI into that, man, and it looked, oh, it looked like it, you were in a movie. It was that amazing. Hi, Unordinary Programmer. Thank you so much, man. I am like so, uh, man. But I'm getting over that, man. I'm feeling great. I'm glad to be back. Thank you. Hi, Jason. Hey, Necro.
it's one of those videos that gets you so emotionally invested in it. You're like, ah! it's like a horror movie where you're like, don't go there. No, why'd you do that? Oh, you shouldn't. No, just because he's a priest doesn't mean get in the car with him. This dude is something's up with him. You can just tell he's something off with this dude. And sure enough, you know, you all know, I don't know if you know the video, but you should check it out, man. It's one of those ones where you're screaming at the, at the uh, screen like, no! Sharon gets chloroformed and everything. She gets the Casey Anthony treatment. You know, it's like, ah, no! That was my first interaction with, with a temptation, man. And I was blown away immediately by Sharon. And to see two greats on the stage at the same time, I'm really looking. I'll be going to see them in, what, nine days now? I see Within Temptation with Iron Maiden on the 7th and then Epica and Sabaton on the 8th. Ay, Chihuahua, this is going to be amazing. I'm really glad we got sick before, you guys, because the following week after that, I had to go to, to Philadelphia to go see Band Maid for the first time. Uh, I've seen virtual shows, but not them live. And so I'm really grateful I got sick before. But to see Taria and Sharon on the stage at once, and they have done some collaborating before, and it was beautiful. I think, like, I tried to do it, uh, something paradise, and then, like, they blocked me. <laughs> I tried to upload it. They are like, nope. So I like to see when uh, really good artists collaborate with one another. Although it's a fan cam and sometimes you can get really good quality videos if you have your phone and or your GoPro, but you have to hold it a certain way, especially if you're in front of speakers to make it sound okay. And what a great, but what a great view that this person had had. Like you got Sharon and the whole band in front of you and then you here comes Taria out. Like what? And they're dressed so beautifully. This, These women of music, man, I don't understand how somebody could be so damn pretty and so damn talented at the same time. It's like, you wait, so you got the musical gene, the musically talented gene, and the hotness gene? Like, that's a double whammy. You're very special. As a... <laughs> That's what I think anyways. Major, major kudos to these ladies. So many ladies of rock, man, are just stunning. She's always reminded me of, like, even though she's Finnish, of this Icelandic princess. Of course, we got Bjork. <laughs> that represents Iceland, right? She ain't that pretty. But she's pretty and, in like, intensely talented. But these girls knock it out of the ballpark. <laughs> Roger. No 
Roger, Mitchell, you got some making up to do. Go ahead. Act up, man. Let it out. Get all funny woony on it, man. Just do it. Be yourself. Be your bad self. Go on now. <laughs> Look, I think in all seriousness, welcome back, man. It's good to have you back. I get worried about y'all when you disappear on me. But then again, I disappear on you guys too. You know life happens, man. But I'll always be back. I'm like a raging case of herpes. Once you get me, you're never getting rid of me. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> myself i've seen this and that it was paradise i was like it's paradise whatever whatever par what is what is it it is it's paradise uh within temptation um with taria and sharon i walk alone is a taria song and this is eight years ago taria tarun let's see and I was like, I knew it. I was like, wait a minute here. But I love the jazzy beats they're putting on this. It sounds like more of a jazz fest than a like, well, jazz metal fest. Yeah. Yeah. I knew I I knew I recognized this song. And I walk alone. It's also a is that a tarot song too? I think it is. I walk alone. Let me double check. <laughs> I walk forever. My my mistake. My mistake. <laughs> All right. Cancel. God, she's so pretty, ain't she? Like it makes me even more excited to see them play live. I'm super duper excited, y'all. Super excited. All right, I got some PayPal's from up uh, two from Jason, one from Tria. Let me send these over. So we got three spots remain. One. Death, Jason. Death without judgment. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice if we all paid like we 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 went through our life and we we come to that phase of death and there ain't no judgment. Like, are you lucky? You could be a jerk, and you're gonna be just fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're not going to. Uh, you're not gonna pay for your your misdeeds and tom fuckery that you get to do. <laughs> you just get to act a fool, be all jerks and stuffs. And then you're going to be just fine. You're not going to the eternal pits of hell or nothing. 
Let me send these over to uh, the girls here for Jason and Tria. And we got one from Tawaka. We got some ginger coming up. Oh, shit. Thank you, Florinta. Florinta, I hope I said that right. You know I can't even speak the English, let alone other languages. So bad at this. I'm so bad at this talking stuff, you guys. Ginger, who is going to be the one? Ooh, I might have to cut that in a reaction video. I love me some, uh, Ginger. I think they are showing their pure Ukrainian strength. I will support that band. Yes, just because of who they are. And how they did not bow down although the guys were stuck in ukraine uh thankfully tatiana wasn't and the guys are now away from there but like you guys like i'm sorry but given the circumstances of what's going on especially the other day with the pipeline somehow some way exploding in the Baltic Sea. Now, could you imagine how many mammals marine life is going to be killed? Like, I don't know what happened. I can only speculate. Uh, and I don't, I try not to get political, you guys. I, I, I don't, I like right and wrong. I like being a patriot. I love my veterans. I love my country. I love people. I love marine life. I love animals. I love nature. And it's just a coincidence that America opened up a brand new pipeline. You know, and this pipeline brings energy to all of Europe. But now we have one that's going to give Europe energy because... This one is no longer. Now this, that has been televised. It's on TV. It's on YouTube. If Putin invades Ukraine, we will go after that pipeline by any means necessary. I will make it happen. And so it happened. And you have to look at that as going... Are you crazy? Like, I don't want to fight with Vladimir Putin, you guys. I don't want him to get mad and see this as a something hostile towards him. Like, if you are not scared, you, you should be. I am. I. That's up to you if you want to be or not. But me, I am petrified that something is going to happen. And you don't want to piss somebody off that has one of the largest nuclear arsenals in the entire world. Okay? So I'm nervous for everybody's safety. The Russians, Ukrainians, Europeans, Americans... It's pretty scary. I don't know. Call me crazy. But when I see my political leaders, the leaders of the free world, threatening to take this pipeline down, and then it happens? I don't know how to respond to that. Uh, I'm sorry, Suri. Uh, that should be scary as hell. That should be like, oh boy, here we go. I don't want anybody to die. <laughs> I don't want anybody to die, and I sure as hell don't want marine life to die. You know, because think about it. When we have oil spills in the oceans, more often than not, I remember when President Obama was in office and we had a, a massive oil leak and it killed so much wildlife. 
you know, like hundreds of thousands of, I think millions of gallons of, of crude oil leaked into the oceans. And it takes so many years to clean that up. Many, where I think we're still paying for it now, right? Uh, anyways, I hope I'm not sounding like I'm being paranoid or anything. But Vladimir Putin is not known to not be like somebody that you should not fear. You should, like, he's scary. All right. This is the warning. This is Z. And this is at, where is this at? The Eastern in Atlanta, Georgia. I love ATL. What a great, great, great city that is. I was very excited to be able to visit Atlanta and to be able to uh, actually not stay in the airport for a layover. Get to rent a car, get to explore a little bit, you know. And I, right now in Chicago, like, I don't even want to go there. Like, no thanks. All right. Z for Bill Goodwin. Vic <laughs> Miller. Thank you, bud. Uh, hang on, Danny. Now, this band cam is exceptionally good. Great quality and purple and blue light is like so scary when you're in photography and you're trying to record videos because they look kind of like, but uh, more more so blue than than purple. But this one actually sounds good and it came out very clear. What in the, like they read my mind. This song especially, like what are, this is going to happen. Tragedy is going to happen. War is going to happen. Bad things are going to happen if we continue on the way we are. Again, showing that these girls are so wise beyond their years and that they do care. They care because the music that they write and they sing to us, it has some meaning and it makes you look at yourself like, uh-oh, I'm acting right. I better start acting right. It makes you question your morality in a good way. So this is why the warning gets an A1 in my eyes always. Yeah, I like this song. Hold on a second here. Hold on. We got Demons Row in the house. Hi, bud. One of my favorite YouTubers, by the way. His channel. Oh, my God. It's lit, yo. Everything motorcycle club culture. Like, you want to know some dirt? <laughs> oh my god and plus he's very like very patriotic and stuff love him hi bud it's so the ghost all right i want to ask you live in front of your audience for a date next time you're in new york city <laughs> oh my god did i just get asked out on you i've been proposed to before on live streams jason i'll talk to you after the stream Oh my. All right. I'm backing this up. I am blushing. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> 
Verstappen. I got uh some paypals and i'm like i want to make sure that like we 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 make sure everything is is there and and nobody gets skipped and what have yous and then daddy just like comes out of like i already know the song but here she hits us with the, this epic guitar solo and then paulina it just opens up that diaphragm and lets it all out and you're just like Whoa! I'm backing up. I'm backing it up because, and look at how fun she is on her riser. She's like, let me give you a little bit of guitar. Yum, yum, yum. That is just so good. These girls, man. And if I, if I ever see anybody out there dogging these girls, I'm, I swear on everything holy, I might slap a hoe. I'm just saying, because what are you, what? I'm going to give you some cute tips while I'm at it to clean your ears. What was that? What do you call that? Listen, we'll do it again. And you're just going to be like, oh my God. I just think they're so much fun. Good Lord. People don't know talent, I tell you. I've listened to hundreds of thousands of songs. I think I know what I'm talking about. Hold on. We got to go back even farther. Sorry, my bad. Not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and here she goes. song in the flint michigan for the mayday tour on may 1st by the way and i'm going because i remember their sound check and i'm going ah you know these girls are one of those bands that is exceptionally in like good in studio but they're even more extraordinarily amazing live and like i don't ever want to see anybody be like that ain't talent what like this is they're three girls, man. Like VOB as well. You got three a three piece band doing that. You know, it's it's enough. They're just the drums, a bass, and a guitar, and two singers in Ellie's backing vocals, but still like they do what most five to seven uh, piece bands can do. So 
like I recognize wholeheartedly how talented they are. And not to mention the lyrics and the songs that they write, man. They talk about, you know, the, the world being a better place, how messed up it is, and how we can fix it if we all act right. You know, I love the I love those girls. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do two numbers games today, you guys, uh, because uh, Vic actually bought up a thing. So we got two spots left as of now. This is for a numbers game. Uh, one. Let's do this, and we'll do. You know what? Let me go grab. Uh, I think I have a, a little thingy over here. Like a post, yeah. I have pens over here. I didn't bring them over there. Good lord, my sinuses is all messed up again. This will work. Paper, pen. All right. Now they could be singing about slaying bitches and selling drugs and all kinds of gang stuff and violence and F the police, all that shit. They could be singing about, I, I, I found a song, you guys, it fucking blew my mind. It made me sick. It was a girl, she was a rapper, um, and... It was the song called NBD. And I was like, uh, little girls are going to be listening to this. So the warning has the, one of those bands that are very influential in a good way, in a positive way. And I myself do not want little girls listening to Cardi B or Nicki Minaj, or this other rapper chick that singing about no baby daddy because she's got murder on her mind while she's twerking in front of Planned Parenthood. I'm just saying. It's effed up, y'all. It's effed up. All right, what number am I going to pick? Let's do, let me make sure you can't see me. All right. It'll never be 69. All right. I just got to figure out which one. <laughs> okay. All right. I got it, you guys. I think I picked that before. Never mind. Okay. Okay, now I got a new one. Pick a number between 1 and 100. And if you guess it, you win a free song played today on today's stream no more than five minutes long and don't you dare give me no led zeppelin or no evanescence or nothing that's going to get my stream blocked okay okay go ahead y'all the warning thanks jeff what's up buddy yes the warning you should check them out man they are oof, one of my favorite bands uh watch that whole whiskey a go-go show just watch it and if i I urge you to look at the lyrics for Survive. That's, the, one of, that's my favorite warning song is Survive. Because it, read the lyrics and then listen to the song. And if I guarantee you, you can relate to it. You can relate to it and it's going to be like, whoa, okay. And you never know. It might do what it did for me to you oh shit oh no no one got it yet very close though it might it might help heal you with some bullshit you might have went you know went through we do need some more nova she's amazing i love that i love that woman she's such a daggone sweetheart too when I did my reaction to church, she was like, oh my God. She knew how hard it affected me. And heart emojis, she was all on that. She's just such a sweet, sweet pea. And I did, uh, what else did I do? Um, gang gang. 
that was good with her and Tom. I think they need to collaborate more. You know, not that she doesn't do a good enough job directing and, and doing everything for the videos, but I think we need more collaborations with Tom and Nova. You know, I like to see them duet. I think it's nice. A couple of you have gotten really close. The number is from 50 to 100, by the way. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to take things a little, you know, break them down a little bit. 50 to 100. <sighs> gang, gang. It's a song by Nova Rockefeller. Um, it was basically saying, you know, she, Tom and her, that's her ride or die. And I appreciate the way that, you know, how strong they bounce off one another. She's, that's the better half and, and you can see it. It's such a sweet, it's such a sweet thing to watch, you know. No, I haven't seen that one yet, Jeff. I've done Girlfriend, Boyfriend and Gang Gang. Um, I know she had a new album that came out. I think I did one from there too. All right, let's narrow it down. It's an odd number. 50 to 100. This is a views. It's 2.5 milligram menthol. Because I was on 5 milligram. No cigarettes, then 5 milligram. Now I'm down to 2.5 and, and then eventually I'll kick this, kick this out of here. Because I don't, I if I don't have... Uh, if I don't have nicotine, I might do bad things to people. <laughs> I'm just playing. Texas Militia, you, we need more reaction videos with you and XMC. I agree. Did you see? No, it's not cannabis, it's nicotine. Um, if it was cannabis, y'all should see me when I take edibles. That Those are one of the funnest streams ever. Um, the... The video that him and I did, we did a stream together while I was in uh, Georgia and they demonetized it. It's like, wow. Oh, Marcus gets it. 61. Get it? There you go. Good job, Marcus. Uh, I can't believe they did that. Like, if you, if you are, like... You can only have one political view when it comes to YouTube. I swear. And they'll let that fly. Because big tech, as you know, they are in the pockets of, you know, I hate to even say it, but it's true. They let a lot of things slide. And it's like, and if you are not with them, they are like, we're going to demonetize you at every uh, every step of the way. And XMC got demonetized a long time ago because he doesn't bow to anybody. And I appreciated him coming from a soldier's perspective of how they, oh, they railroad. They just did him dirty, man. All right. For Tria, we got this band. And I was introduced to this band by uh, Tori Reacts. Um, Ghost. And this one is called Faith. A pale tour named Death. And this, I've, I haven't gotten so much into Ghost uh, as I want to. Ooh, they're all dressed up. Now, this guy goes through transformations like he ranks up. He's like a video game. Like, he's a human being that is like a video game. Like, he levels up and does, like, into, like, these evil priestess 
like is that a priest evil priest priestess is a woman right don't get me on that gender shit man fuck that i'm rewinding i'm just gonna play the music <laughs> oh he's getting it Oh, oh, and I did find out because Tori reacts is very, very, very like informative when it comes to these guys, right? I also learned that he doesn't have any like official like forever bandmates. Like he gets session players every tour. So it's like that is special. He gives people jobs. Yeah. He gives more people jobs than President Biden does. <laughs> I'm sorry, Trio. That sucks. Yeah, hope it sucks. Wait, wait. You, that's right. Trio got COVID. They say it's over. I heard it was over. There was an announcement. The leader of the free world even said it. COVID's over. There's you don't see masks, do you? Well, I beg to differ. A bunch of people I know are getting it. <laughs> oh, Tria. She's one of them. God for... No, that shit ain't over with, man. I'm going to be the one to tell you it's not. That, that COVID is not over. <laughs> Bye, Jeff. every album i think he gets more evil and evil like yeah he's scary to me he's always been i always seen him and like i was like nope i don't want to see him he had like this high priestess hat on and like he looked like a skeleton and i'm like no man i'm pretty good on it and i love horror movies but he creeped me out and i was like no dude i ain't even gonna listen to them but actually i started to and they're really good like, my bad for being judgmental. Yes, I did. I judged a book by its cover, and I was a dick for that. And I apologize, and I won't do it again. Oh, he's so creepy! Damn, look at that crowd! care what people want to be you want to be jesus lover or what? i don't care do it do whatever your heart tells you to do if it makes you a good strong moral person i'm all for it yes please please do uh drum line stay safe everybody that's in florida my goodness i hope you're okay i know a lot of people that um I know a lot of people that are, have been affected, and I love Florida. That's one of my favorite states to visit. Uh, so if you're still watching, if we ever go on a date, well, I ain't going to New York City, man. That place is ziggity-boo off the chain. Crazy. I don't know how you do it, how you live there, knowing all that tomfuckery going on. We'd have to go to Jersey or something, man. <laughs> go, go down through the Lincoln Tunnel a little bit. My lord, I tell you. Yeah, I'll look right now. Right now, Vic Miller. Because me is mine. Oh, it's a 
There, man, it got all demonic. I'm trying to check my PayPal. It got all demonic and stuffs, man. Oh my god, what is going on here? Yeah, I got, I got you, uh, Vic. I really, yeah. A second numbers game. Yeah, I got you right here. these guys too is the crowd interaction like their fans literally dress up for concerts man and like i've seen so many people in the audience just with their faces painted and all kinds of just amazingness that makes me happy to see like it's a fandom like people are so like so just immersed in the ghost culture that when they show up they're like, yep, I'm part of you. You know what I mean? I love that. I really do. Camaraderie. He's got really tight pants on too, man. <laughs> like that. I ain't even. I'm, I'm not lying. I would really like to I subscribe to them. Oops. Oh, well, I am today. I would really like to see the, his transformation and what he looks like underneath that mask. He, he's he's got to be pretty handsome. He's got a very good voice. I think Tori had sent me a picture of him without his masks on. And I, I think he is very, very, uh, a very, very good looking person. I don't know what well, we might. I don't, I don't know. But I want to see his transformation. I want to see like how he went from like whatever, whatever his name is. I don't even know. Tori knows them all. But I want to see, like, how he did that. It's pretty neat. Very, like, keeps it, like, it keeps you wondering and it keeps that mystique, you know? Like, it's, like, not predictable. I like that. All right, you guys, there's a band called Death. Death. Sounds so brutal. Without judgment for Jason. Let's see. Hold on a second. This channel, I don't often see channels like this that make me go, oh, I have to subscribe to that because that name is just amazing. This channel name is Death Metal Chuck. I'm subscribing immediately <laughs> because his name is Chuck. I had an Uncle Chuck. Well, he's still my uncle. He's not dead yet. I like that name. Hi, Joe. Wait a minute. <laughs> Joe Knight, I would go out on a date with you. I don't think my wife would mind. I think she would, Joe. I think she would. 
She'd be like, fuck no. I can't break up a marriage, man. I'm nope, I'm not a home wrecker. Hi, Belly. Oh no! Oh my god, I'm like, this sounds like Slayer. An old school death metal. And I just learned, this is why I like to read comments, you guys. If the solo breaks my heart, Chuck was a poet, a beautiful artist, and a human being. How it saddens me to think about such a great man gone too soon. R.I.P. Uh, Chuck. And this was six years ago. Aww. Rest in peace, heavy metal Chuck. You should try to do Lorna Shore's uh, Into the Hellfire. <laughs> that would be amazing. man that was really dope i'm listening to this and i'm going oh my god this is old school slayer man and this is what death death metal i almost said death core used to be this is exactly what paved the way for death core today and all right drumline i have all right you can either since we just brought up slayer how about either raining blood or my favorite slayer track dead skin mask I, I think you would do amazing with that. Uh, Raining Blood, uh, amazing. And also Dead Skin Mask. That's my favorite Slayer song of all time. I just think it's one of the, it's it's just one of the most beautiful, uh, beautifully written songs. Uh, all the whole thing. I think Dead Skin Mask would be dope. Do it. <laughs>
is a good one that's one of my favorites as well but man i this brings me back to the like mid 90s where death metal was at its like best deicide six feet under cannibal court well cannibal corpse of course slayer you know those were the real heavy hitters back then and you're just like oh it's bringing me back to when when we first hear stuff like this because I went from like Metallica, Iron Maiden, into Slayer, and you're just like, oh, and then Cannibal Corpse as well. Like, oh, it's bringing me. It's very nostalgic to me. This this has got so much going on with it, where it's just like, oh, that's how music, good music, used to sound. Like, there was no auto-tune and none of that shit that we have today. It was all real, authentic music. Some some amplifiers and your instruments. That's it. No computer programming to mix beats and stuff like that. The beats had to be made with human beings. I loved it, man. I loved that, that death metal era. I had some some really cool underground shit as well. And like uh another one of my favorites was like Acid Bath. Um what is that other uh Fear Factory. Oh, D Manufacture, my favorite, one of my favorite me uh like the real death metal, heavy metal uh, genre that oh, Fear Factory was amazing. I want to. I just. I loved. I love this. This whole era because I've seen Slayer a handful of times live. Although I'll never, never crowd surf with them again. You know, and it brings me back to that whole Pantera era as well, from when Cowboys from Hell. You went to the transition of vulgar display of power. It was like the exorcist happened. Like something possessed that band in particular to just go heavy, heavier. And what they came up with was absolute fucking platinum diamond status. Very good, man. This This song is fucking killer, man. And I'm... It's so sad when you see people uh, as part of that era when you're growing up and, and they're no longer here, man. It's what a loss, man. This dude was very talented. We're pain in the colors. Frivolous combinations will be abolished. Hi, Mike. Oh, thank you, Drum Lion. I can't wait to see it. I'll be on that, man. Fuck. 
my God, didn't that bring you back to the 90s? Like, when music was, like, really good? Like, it's not even so much of, of music being real. This fucking hair is in my face. Music wasn't the only good thing about the 90s. People got along. They didn't beat the crap out of each other because of politics. They don't run into stores and, and loot everything and burn shit down. Like, everybody got along, no matter what color you were, or if you were gay or not. Who? No one cared. Kids went to school and learned subjects that actually helped them in, in progress in life and be successful. Our teachers in the 90s, we didn't know who they were dating. We didn't care. We didn't even ask. And I had a couple of teachers that, you know, had lives out believe it or not lives outside of school that we had no idea about none and we didn't press the issue either we had a gym te of course the stereotypical gym teacher she was gayer than gay but did we care no we didn't give a shit especially if we us girls loved her do you know why because she empathized with us when we had our periods and was like, I know what you're doing and de dealing with right now. I'm not going to run the shit out of you. You can take it easy, you know, for the next couple of days, you know, but we never even looked at her differently. That is what we need. This is what I miss most about how the world was. Like, no one cared what you did. No one cared that if you had a difference of opinion... And, and sure shit, people, if they called you names, all you did was have to punch them in the eyeball. That was it. That was it. They bullied you, well, you knock them out. But today, man, it's so much different. Like, I really wish we can go back and not give a shit what the next person's doing. And not try to bring children into adult issues, man. We shouldn't do that. Because I'll tell you what, coming from a person here who was introduced to sexuality at a very young age, my kid's age now, right? Like my little one's almost five years old and that's when that shit happened to me. And that ruined my fucking life for, for fuck, 25, 30 years. I was a wreck. You know, and I think today we need to just leave the kids alone. In school, who cares about your personal business? These social justice crusaders are ruining it, ruining it for children. Like, goddamn, don't hide shit from children's parents either, man. We want to know if our kids are suicidal or, you know, feeling like they don't belong in their bodies. We want to know that shit. We, we have the right to know. I'd be damned if I'm going to send my kid to school and some teacher is going to be doing that shit and keeping shit from me. Like, the, the dinner table is the most important thing every day where you can sit down and talk to your children and talk about these issues that are plaguing them. Or you could talk to them about drugs or, or, you know, just everyday life that something might happen or, you know, how to prevent stuff from happening. And when teachers overstep their boundaries, that leaves us holding our dicks in our hands like we're the ones that our children are supposed to come to when they have problems like that. Not a teacher. You don't get to see. The, oh, you, so many times, especially where I went to high school. Not so much when I was in high school, but now these kids are killing themselves. The parents are walking in their homes and finding their children hanging When you do that to kids, you strip away that parent's ability to parent. And I'm very vocal about that because 
I don't like to see kids dying. I don't like to hear that. That breaks my fucking heart and my soul. And I don't ever want my child to not come to me if something happens to him. If people would just look at it from that perspective, I think it would be a much better place. We would be in a much better place. All right, let me go on to this song here. Living to Die by Hypocrisy. Oh, Joe. <laughs> no evidence, right? like when they had that muffled voice he sounds a lot like Phil Anselmo from Pantera I love all these underground bands right or bands and this is they're signed with Nuclear Blast and which is a great record label with a, you know a lot of really good artists my face some of my favorite are on Nuclear Blast I miss the 90s so bad because it's just the world is so different today and not in a good way. As time goes on, we're supposed to improve and get better with time. And it's only getting worse. It's like a virus. It really is. was uh, that is a huge consequence of why these kids today are having low self-esteem issues or they're feeling suicidal or they do it like you see so many young kids on the news that are like 9 10 12 you know, young teenagers, 
preteens taking their own life because they're bullied relentlessly. I've taught my kids and I tell Roman is just now learning to be in school and around other kids and how not to be mean to other children. I refuse to point out color differences in my house. My child will not see color. It's wrong. My oldest, I always taught him. If you are bullied, which he was, some kid actually brought a knife to school. Was ex Well, he was suspended. He wasn't expelled until he did it again. He was My kid was bullied by the across-the-street neighbor's kids because they had beef with me. So their little bastard had been tormenting my child. But I taught my son, no matter what, that I know that was traumatizing for you and I know that happened and I will do everything and anything I can to make sure that that kid has consequences. And of course he was expelled. But in no way, shape, or form is that okay to do on to others. And if you see that shit going on in school, you say something. I don't care how big that bully is. You say something. And you stick up for those kids. And my kid has one of the best heads on his shoulders today. But it, it really does, you kids that grow up with bullies as parents, what do you think they're going to do? You got to look at their home life and say, ah, that is the same way. So the apple does not fall far from the tree, now does it? And so therein lies... It's very difficult to protect your own child from a parent who's a bully. So I understand. I empathize 100%. And if they see a lot of domestic violence in the household, they're going to be the same way. Hopefully they won't if they have a strong enough parent that takes up for them and lets them know, hey, listen, you don't act like that. You don't put your hands on a woman. Fortunately for me, my son, he grew up right. And he'll never be like his father. Never. Over my dead body. <laughs> Got there. Burger kill. Hi, me.
think also like the the struggles that I've been through in my life has made me the most strongest human being that I can be. And it's made me more compassionate as well because I was at a point in my life where I hated myself and I hated other people. I it was so it was so such the a, a bullshit way to live, but you know I had to face a, a lot of harsh realities and and grow from it. And what's so great about when you struggle is when you persevere through them and then you pass that on to your children and they become good human beings because of you, you know? I like this band. It's reminding me of like what's going on today, man. This is just a big virus. Oh. They got the comments turned off, too. That's, like, weird. All right. Cool. That song was awesome, and so was that... I really enjoyed Death Without Judgment. That was really neat, man. Uh, thank you, Jason. All right, uh, we're going to do another numbers game. I already got the number written down. One through 100. If you guess the song, you win a song under five minutes, please. Not heavily copyrighted. And go ahead, y'all. Go on now, get it. I can't breathe to save my life. <sighs> Stupid management meeting, Kenneth. <laughs> damn, damn it, job. Damn it, Bobby. Yeah, we got you. Uh, we got numbers game one and two. Vic Miller got you all set. Callie! She's probably in the kitty litter box. I'm going to go check on her in a second so I can go to the bathroom. Callie, come here. Come here, Callie. Get over here. She's attacking the goddamn cat again. Callie, come here. Come here. Come here. I see you. Come here. I see you, big girl. Come on, big mama. Oh, you can't go under there. You're too big. Come over here. Come around here. Come say hi to me. Come on up. What are you doing? Let me see your face. Were you in the kitty litter again? Make sure nobody guessed it. One to a hundred. She took my seat. Callie, sit down. This is my Callie. Here, come on up. Here, come on. Come on up. Go ahead. Get on up there. There you go. Good girl. <laughs> Here's your new host. Here's your new host. We gotta look at look for the number. Hello, Double T. Callie has been joining us. Are you a good, a good girl? Are you a good girl? One to a hundred. Yes, because we got two numbers games today because of Vic Miller. Thank you, Vic. Oh, I'm glad they're calling you from the VA finally. People, they, they never... Uh, Never take care of our vets anyways. Give them hell. Give them hell! What are you doing? You're so awkward. This dog, I knew she was... She snuck up through the, the gate this morning. And I knew it was her going up the stairs. Because she has walking farts. She's walking up, farting. She's going... I'm like, oh, Callie, there she goes. <laughs> this dog farts like a man, huh? Do you fart? You fart like a man. Yes. You're my good girl. I wish she was little. She probably looks little on screen, but she's far from it, huh? Yes, this is my my dog. My good girl. Ah, Mike, get it. Mike, good job, Mike. 91. Congratulations. Mike finally wins. 
<laughs> I'm gonna take this knucklehead up to uh up back into the kitchen where she belongs. You gotta watch out for bank or for burglars. She's very vicious. Arr. Show him your teeth. Ah, give me your teeth. Give me your tooth. Oh, <laughs> she hit me first. All right, come on, you. I'll be back, you guys. I have to go potty. We're good. Jesus. My God, Callie. You're so clumsy, man. She's like a bull in a china shop. I'm going to play this death song again because... Callie, you cannot go through there. There's cords and shit. Come here. There she goes. Jesus. I'll be right back, you guys. Get out of my ass. Quit sniffing my butt, you weirdo. Why do dogs do that? You smell your butt. Yeah, she's a hundred pounds. She weighs a hundred pounds and she farts like a man. No offense, guys, but she really does. She'll be sitting there scratching and she'll be like... Alright, be right back.
almost headbutted my microphone there. It's up here now. That's one way to keep your hair from going all crazy when you're headbanging. Put it in a hat. All right, you guys. How did you... How How is it? It's 77 there? Jeez, old Pete's. What did you pick, Mike? Let's see. What did you pick? What did you pick? Borknagor. Ah, sweet. No, you're fine. It should be under five minutes, Mike. I've said it 80 times. But we got we got time, buddy. All right, Tawaka. I gotta put I gotta put lipstick on. I'm doing a reaction video. Barknagor! What a great, great name that is. Luckily I have a vanity right here. Can you guys hear me still? Oh, I gotta make sure I don't look all fucked up. More fucked up than I already do look. <laughs> Alright, lipstick. Let's put lipstick on a pig and make it look pretty again. Alright, here we go. Quick, quickly. Quickly, put makeup on the pig. Pig, pig looks nice. Pig looks nice. Oh, this is live, motherfuckers. Ooh. Now, I've been to see Ginger, and I can tell you this much. They do not disappoint live. Oh, my God. They throw one hell of a show. Let me check my hair. I wish my mirror was over here so I could see. I look like a doofus. My hair was all looking nice and shit before, but now it looks like a hot mess. Stupid morals, stupid values, stupid morals, stupid values make me all kinds of hoo-hoo and ha-has and crying like a baby. Boo-hoo. All right, here we go. What's up, guys? My name is Just Jen. Today I'm reacting to Ginger, who is gonna be the one. And this is live. I'm not quite sure where it is, what venue, but my dear friend Tawaka had requested this on my live stream. Let me see. I've seen these guys live before, and they are amazing. Uh, in fact, 1113 is where I seen Ginger at the House of Blues. This was their tour uh, last year. No. Wait. They're coming back? That's where I seen them last time. And they rocked. They played with All Hail the Yeti, Suicide Silence, and Ginger was the headliner. Oh, Tatiana. So this is the video that we're doing today. I can affirm that... Ginger throws one hell of a live show. So I'm really excited for this one. Five minutes, 29 seconds long. I could listen to them all day. All right then, for Tawaka. I can't wait to see Tatiana, oh boy. Oh, so I'm going la ha. Where do 
I hit the pause button? Where? I yeah, oh no. When the opening of this song, those riffs were just sick. The drums, it was like a precursor of what was to come out behind the stage, right? In comes Tatiana. And what is so fascinating about her, Tatiana Shmelik, is not only can she growl better than some men, but she's got also that beautiful, clean vocal style as well. It's like yin and yang. It's so amazing, yet so like satisfyingly fascinating. I absolutely would love to see these guys in concert again. They performed even better than I could imagine. And one hell of a headliner, too, deserving of that top spot. Now, this was a few years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Let me double check. 2017, like, what, five, almost six years now. Oof. And look at how far they've come. I think it's amazing. They are one of the best representations of Ukraine. Just strength and badassery. <laughs> There's always got to be one. in their songs any band when you hear the mf or word you're like ah, i know i am i'm like a school child i'm like yeah that's so rock and roll so metal i'm weird like that it's so fascinating also to see how much they've grown as a band not only musically but how more pretty she got over the years as well she got like she was like wine that's what ginger is as well they're like fine wine they age just like it they only get better that bass though is so sick uh everything about this band is amazing but the fact that they can play like this live and even even uh their studio stuff is amazing but live it beats it does it it totally obliterates their studio version and it's so rare too when you find those bands that they are better live than in studio i'd rather listen to live versions any day of the week anyway and i think one of the studio the best studio songs uh like the holy crap the latest i think uh, vortex that one was like, whoo! Yeah, Ginger's just um, the 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 more they're in this scene, the more they cement themselves there, and they keep rising to the top. Uh, yeah, that things rise when Tatiana's at there. <laughs> I'm just saying. She's hot. Nice. Shut 
there she was. Now, what is so fascinating again, maybe more so fascinating about Tatiana here, is she didn't go to school for this. She taught herself. And being that where she comes from, you know, good for them that they're as successful as they are today. Now, like you have your, there's so many reactions to Pisces and judgment and punishment because it's very, it's a, it's a, there are two remarkable tracks and it, they showcase their, the, the, what Ginger as a whole is perfectly. So that is why you'll see so many people covering it. Now they don't perform Pisces live anymore, but they do perform judgment and punishment and that live whoo i remember one of my first reactions to ginger being judgment and punishment and she blew me away but when i got to experience it live i was like oh there it is it was just so amazing to be able to see these songs and these artists live when i'm doing reactions to them that is like the icing on the cake for me yeah Ginger was one special because I went alone, but I met a friend for life there. And it was one of the best experiences ever. Just the crowd interaction uh, in Cleveland, Ohio. They treated her with the ut and the boys with the utmost respect. Now, that can't be said for, I think it was Philadelphia or somewhere else in PA where or Pittsburgh that... People were throwing water on her beer and, and see, we don't act like that here. We welcome bands and we want them to come back. If I were her and, and, and this band, I would say, F you guys, we'll never play there again. Now, I don't know if they will, probably knowing Ginger, they will. But if that were me, I'd be like, go fuck yourselves. You know, treat them with respect because they're coming out. And the as much as they perform and they put into their performances, you don't want to run people like that away. I got she got me drooling over here. She's got me salivating. You know, I just think I would want people to come back to my city. I would be embarrassed if that should happen here. I would. I would feel like, oh my god, I can't believe. But then again, if I seen that, I'd probably kick someone in the balls. <laughs> yeah, metal chicks. We're kind of like that, you know. Stick up for one another. All right, then, back to the music. She's a beautiful woman, and I'm allowed to look. Damn! 
get the, the you get we get metal and then we get a little like ska and then a little like rastafarian i love that they're so versatile ginger ah look at pisces over here man wh what a great band this is you never want to like like i don't ever want to quit doing what i'm doing because I always get exposed to these amazing bands with you guys, you know, and you always lead me to, like, the most coolest shit ever. And it makes me happy. Music makes me happy. It soothes the savage beast in us all. And if you can look at Tatiana and not drool, something wrong with you. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. But what's so cool about, about Ginger in a whole is that they sound that good. Like, everything was on point live. They sounded spectacular. And it's it's that live experience that nothing can top. When you get to see these amazing artists live in the flesh and get to experience that great music that you love live in person. So, Tawaka, thank you again for requesting this. If you guys have any more suggestions, feel free to drop them down below if you could be so kind as to throw a like on the video i'll gladly do more ginger i'm just now getting back into doing reactions and i feel good all right guys my name is just jen take care of yourself take care of one another and stay strong okay stay strong and uh humble and all that good morality stuff you know stay metal all right guys i'm just jen see you bye She was awesome. God, man. Just what a good looking chick she is. And like, her body's banging, y'all. It's banging. And she got that, like, her makeup is not, she's toned it down a little and brought out more of her natural beauty, which I appreciate. You know, I think that's awesome. Sometimes we get dolled up, but sometimes we tone it down a little bit. I have my days. I don't look like Tatiana, but she's got that natural Ukrainian beauty. They're all beautiful over there, I tell you. Swedish girls, too. Like, what the hell? Uh, what's in your water or something? Is it in your water? What's up with that? All right. On to burger kill. Burger kill. I'd like to kill some burgers myself. I'm hungry. <laughs> Shadow of Sorrow. Live sound from the corner. Says. All right, then. Burger kill. What is this? someone's they lighten something up they're doing like gravity bong hits or something because like that there's no there's little tiny smoke when you're smoking a doobie or anything but somebody just like went watch this holy cannolis watch here in this this like the left hand side of the screen like i'm gonna blow it up a little bit just so you guys can see this shit that's fucking insanity look at this somebody is getting fucking high Right over here! Right there! What? <laughs> they got a fucking dragon in their fucking crowd! A dragon! What was that? Holy shit, balls of fire!
yelling like that. Like, and I get so hoarse. I do. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> and it hurts. It hurts me really bad. So I'm thinking to myself, like, how does this guy do that? How does he sing a whole song like that? Like a whole concert like that? Because when I get angry, that dragon lady comes out, right? And I'm just like, ah! I don't do it so much now. Like maybe like a few years ago, I would be like that because I had some assholes in my life that brought that dragon lady out in me. But like... The only time you'll really see me like, like yelling like that is when I'm singing at a concert or I'm in traffic. God, I hate traffic. <laughs> it pisses me off. I like these guys, man. They're pretty hardcore. Burger Kill. What a brilliant name. Where are these guys from? Burger Kill! Oh! Oh shit! Okay! Check this out, y'all! Burger Kill is an Indonesian heavy metal band originally from Bandung, capital city of West Java. The band named <laughs> The band is named after the fast food restaurant Burger King as a prank. They ain't lying. Burger King. Ew. Ugh. Man, I got some quarrels with that restaurant. I I'll tell you after this song, but man, they've pissed me off. kill oh my god the fucking burger king ew Ugh. listen to this shit right so I, I, I had to drop my kid off at my mom's salon and i had to drop him off so i could uh do some whatever something i don't remember but so he's like, I'm like, do you guys, do you want some Wendy's or Burger King? And he was like, I want Wendy's, mom, because Wendy's chicken nuggets are really good. I'm not going to lie. I like them. I like them better than McDonald's. McDonald's got the fries, you know, they're the best fries. But 
So I go to Wendy's and the line isn't moving. I'm sitting there for like 15 minutes and it ain't moving. I'm going, what in the actual fuck is going on here? Right? So I'm, I, the person in front of me leaves. So it gives me ample room to get the fuck out of there too. Right? So I mosey on down a couple of like blocks or whatever, like maybe not even like five, six hundred feet away is a Burger King because, you know, all the fast food has got to be in the same area. So I go to the (laughs) the drive through and I hear. I'm sorry, online orders, please. That's all. We're only doing online orders. So I'm like, "What, what do you mean you're only doing online or fine? Yeah, DoorDash or online orders only, please. You can't take my... Okay. So I sit there. And I order my food online through their website. I prepay because I'm guessing that there's no registers no more. So I get there and I pull back up to the drive-thru and every time I'm I'm sitting there in my car, I hear people pulling up and DoorDash only and online orders, please. And I'm like, God, this lady's a bitch. And people pulling off whatever. But I was the sucker who stood, I should have been a red flag. So I pull up to the drive-thru box, whatever, the speaker. DoorDash online orders only, please. I'm like, yeah, I have an online order. I just sat in the parking lot and did one. What's your name? Jennifer. So I round the corner, and there's this kid standing there in front of the drive-thru window. He worked at Boston Market next door. And he's just sitting there looking at me. And I'm like, I want to, like... I want to go up to the window to get my food. And he's sitting there having a conversation with Sir B- or the Miss Lady Bitch behind the Burger King counter, sitting there smoking a black and mild and looking at me like I'm inconveniencing him for wanting him to move out of the fucking way so I can get my food that I paid $11 for. And he's just sitting there and the smoke is going inside the the drive-thru window. And she's just, (laughs) and I'm going like this. And so I pull up and he's like, oh, you're mad, huh? And I looked at him and I go, now, what gives you the inclination that I'm mad? Oh, I would be if I was sitting there waiting for my food. Oh, so you did that on purpose to see if you can get a reaction out of me. I said, fortunately, you caught me two years too late. If I was the me of two years ago, I would have ran you over and asked questions later. Yeah, it was a fiasco. I was like, just these kids today have zero respect for anybody. Zero. And I was just like, you, you have a great day, jerk. So if you're watching out there and you're the one that did that, you, you need some discipline and some good manners, kid. Because if you're standing there and somebody's waiting in a car and you're in the drive-thru talking to your little girlfriend, man, move. <laughs> I just sat there like, oh, like I was so like pissed, but I didn't let him know I was pissed. I didn't. I just came up with some slick ass shit like, yeah, okay, buddy. Then I was like, yeah, man, ooh, you lucky. Napalm Records. And look, you're so lucky that you caught me late in life and I'm not going to run you over because you ain't worth me going to prison for jerk. All right, this is for Marcus. Congratulations. League of Distortion. My Revenge. Hi, Jonathan. Hello. Are you ready? Or did you ever? Oh! It 
Definitely not Melissa Pani. Uh, League of Distortion. Anna. Her name is Anna. Exit in. Oh! Yes! Yes! Now she's from. Yeah, Anna from Exit from Eden. Yep, yeah, okay. Treated you like shit. Treated you like what? Shit. Wait a minute, man. What happened? Being battered. They treated you like shit. Treated you like shit. Didn't you were different they made you pay for it made you pay for it it's like an affirmation we never raise our fists abused by domination let's put an end to this set fire to the sun fucking show dude i rarely do this no there's times where i find a song where i'm like damn motherfucker and then i'll wait and shit i'll wait to add it to my music playlist uh, on my channel especially but then i'm just like oh fucking shit i need it now league of distortion Where is it, Apple Music? What? Did I spell it wrong? L-E-A-G? We know? Huh? Why? It's, oh, because it's because uh, I'm searching my library. You dumb ass! Here it is. <laughs> I found it. Add to library. I'm going to download it, too. <laughs> so if I'm on an airplane, I don't have to worry about it. Hit the love. All right, then. Now, this is badass because it's kind of rem reminiscent of, like, what I went through in my life. Oh, man. We all got them theme songs. mistake your kindness for a weakness and then they prey on you but like you grow up and grow out of that when you fight them back and you don't put up with that shit no more oh my god and best believe you're gonna become that person's mortal enemy they're gonna say i'll make up all kinds of fucked up shit you're, you're just gonna be like sitting here like oh i can't believe this bullshit because you fought back and you didn't want to be a victim anymore you got you you will get your revenge and this is the thing i've learned in life like the people that do you dirty don't do a fucking thing to him sit back and enjoy the the show because the re that karma shit is so real and karma will take care of those people who've wronged you best believe it and because you didn't do anything you're going to grow as a person and that revenge will be yours and you're going to be even stronger because of the shit they put you through. And the, the universe is going to reward you in ways. And I'm not just saying this to sound cliche or anything. I'm saying this because it's fucking true and it will happen. Trust me. Man, that's why I take a lot of things from different religions. karma 
is so real. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. To I've seen bad karma attack the people who have done me dirty. And I just sat back and I watched. Like, well, and you can't feel sorry for people like that because they've done you dirty. So why should you? I love this song already. Uh, yep, I'm, I already got it and I'm going to listen to it a lot. What? Oh. Yep. Oh my god. shit that happens a lot you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna leave this fucking box up from now on i'm not gonna take it off no more i'm just gonna it's gonna stay there let me lock this motherfucker in god damn it jennifer son of a bitch <laughs> like my grandma always says well said ay 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 Hey, look, man. It's really that good where I don't care to play it. I, I don't care if I play it again. In fact, I should fucking do it a reaction video. Did you hear it at all, you guys? Hi, Dutch lady lover. Sorry. So, yeah, I was keeping that all to myself. I was having such a gay old time there. Fuck me, man. Oh, my God. All right, then, you guys. Let me formally introduce you. So <laughs> wait a minute. I'm recording this. Hang on. What's up, guys? How are you? I am just Jen. Yay! Today we're reacting to League of Distortion. And this song is called My Revenge. Good golly, Miss Molly. My friend Marcus here had requested, he actually won in this numbers game I have on my live stream. And he picked this song, right? Anna from uh, Exit, what is it? Exit of Eden, I think. I think. I think so. I think that's the Anna Brunner. I think that's the one that she, the band that she came from. Exit to Eden. Well, anyways, so I'm live streaming and I'm playing this song and I'm going and hooting and hollering and this little box, you see this black box right there? My poor viewers here got to see me hooting and hollering and yay! Yay, this is my jam! I forgot to press the button. So I got to play it for them again. So I said, why not do it in a reaction video and tell the world what a moron I am. But look at here. My mistake is for your benefit and I will always write them wrongs. So without no further ado, without further ado, League of Distortion. 
my revenge. Bah! I talked all about karma and shit. Look what happened, man. Don't. Oh. <laughs> Napalm Records. Wait till you see this. Yes. before I robbed everybody of this beautiful, amazing, badass video, well, you know, sometimes in life we get walked all over and treated like crap. We don't fit in and people just walk all over us. And it's like some affirmation. Like, what that does inevitably is break down your confidence. And there's going to be a time, a place, and a day where you have a had enough. And you no longer allow people to treat you like shit. And I was telling everybody how when that happens, you become public enemy number one. And the revenge that you get by not doing anything in retaliation is like, oh, it's really a, a much better to get revenge in the form of karma taking care of those people who have wronged you. Because if I wanted to, and if I have retaliated against everybody that's done me dirty, my ass would be sitting back in prison. But I have grown and become a stronger human being because of the things that I've been through in my life. And I sat back and I watched Karma do her job. And in fact, that made me a better person because of it. I love this because this is like a theme song for the people that have been not only wrong, but picked on and bullied and outcasted. For no apparent reason. Because I know some kids that may, they may dress differently. But deep down, you want to get to know people like that. Because judging a book by its cover is wrong. It really is. So this is like a theme song for all of us people who have been wronged. But then, life righted those wrongs. And we come out on top. Take my word. Take my words of advice. Because they're real. All right then, Anna. Oh, she's so badass. <gasps> I love it. Domination. Let's put an end to this. Set fire to the sun. <laughs> oh. Like, I feel so bad that I got to rob all of my people here of such pure awesomeness. Do you see now why I was so animated? Like, yeah! Like, this is like that, that war cry battle song, theme song of like, yes to all of the people that have been treated badly, but refused to take that shit any longer and just 
like a phoenix rising from the ashes. You just become this badass person because you refuse to allow that to happen anymore. And you will not be walked all over and treated like less than dog shit. They come out with a badass song. I tell you what, man. This, this is quite possibly one of the best metal songs I've heard yet. Man, amazing message behind this one, folks. Yeah. Yes, it is. I've heard it all about my act, my ambition, but never gave a shit. Never gave a shit. <laughs> Was getting nothing but scorn and derision. I had to pay for it. Had to pay for it. They used their domination. I was an easy prey. Goliath versus David. I won't give up on me. And right here is where I was informed. That I forgot to show everybody the video. And I feel like I robbed y'all and I'm so sorry. I wish I could have kept. Well, that is live on the live stream. You can see that. Oh. So I'm I'm in astonishment here. And every time I hear songs like this, it's like, oh yeah. I can relate to that. And I know a lot of you guys out there can too, so. This is, I'm very, I'm enjoying this thoroughly. Oh my God. feeling this is going to be a theme song for a lot of people out there in the world that have felt like, damn, I've been wronged, but my life has gotten so much better since all of that toxicity is behind me. Or it's that song of hope that somebody that's currently going through that, that they can look to the future and see a brighter one. You know, a light at the end of the tunnel, per se. That was just pure badassery. Anna, man, what, man? She's like a freaking gladiator. I don't know if there's anything more here, but... What a badass song, man. Marcus, thank you. I think that's it. Now, amazing. This, yeah, this, uh, I, I've noticed on my apple music that this this album will be dropping november 25th i pre-downloaded it already so 
I'm excited for that. I think that, you know, we all, we all need that theme song. And Anna from Exit Eden, I got that name effed up before, but it's Exit Eden. She, I've listened to some of their music before. I really like her in this. I think it's amazing. And I cannot wait to see what's on that new album. It's going to be badass, I can tell, you know. Sometimes it sucks because you know that artists have gone through something similar because they're writing tracks like this for all of us to relate to. You know, and it's like, oh, man, but it's like, thank you, though, for putting that out there, putting yourself out there, exposing those vulnerabilities, therefore helping other people along. Badass. That song was badass. If you guys have any more suggestions, drop them down in the comment section. Feel free to slap a like on this video if you have been through something similar and you were once that underdog, but now you are like queen or king supreme. You're, you're in charge of your life, as that's what I mean by that. You took that shit back. And seriously, you guys, if somebody wrongs you, don't retaliate against them. Take my word of advice. Sit back and, and wait, because karma will dole out its due justice. Know that. All right, guys, take care of yourself. Stay strong. Stay strong. Remain humble. And through this all, you will become a better human being. I promise you. Just hang in there. All right, guys, I'm just Jen. See you, bye. fucking shit you guys <laughs> wasn't that fucking amazing i feel so bad i was so like you see now why i was so distracted and i was like there was no way possible i was able to even glance over here and look at these comments because i was stuck on that i was stuck because i was reminded of what i've went through and how my life is today <clears throat> it blew my ever loving mind so I apologize, really, you guys, I do, for not pressing that button. Like, in all seriousness, I'm, I am I, I owed it to you to play that. Especially Marcus, since he won, you know. Oh, all right. Dominic Gabriel won. Hello, buddy. Is it your birthday today? Happy birthday. Happy birthday, my friend. <laughs> you had to ask your kids how old you are. I think that's that's called what is that called? Denial, motherfucker. <laughs> you in denial, brother. All right, we got this one for Mike. Or oh, wait. Oh. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm doing a reaction to this. Mike, what time is it? It's 4.30. I'm going to stream till about 5.30. So pick a short song for your birthday, Dominic Gabriel 1. Under five minutes, preferably. All right. I'll be right back. What's up, guys? Welcome to my channel, Tommy Johansson. I love Tommy. If you don't know who Tommy is, he is in a band called Sabaton and Majestica. But he's also doing these amazing Disney ton songs and a lot of cover songs, too. The last video I did was The Sound of Silence, and it was pristine. And he tributed it to his friend Christian who had lost his life at a very young age and left behind a beautiful little girl. This is by The Weeknd. And I love this song because I danced with my kid, with the, my little one, loves this song as well. I cannot wait to see what Tommy does with it. My moderator, Maggie, had picked this song, so this is for her. 
All right then, Tommy, blow me away. Oh my god i'm gonna cry man he is doing so damn good and tummy has that amazing power metal vocals oh my god he'll knock you out with his vocal style man it is he is he is majestic he looks like a damn lion anyway that beautiful mane of his but that voice is so crazy and i'm really glad that he did a metal version of this song and i love the original anyways but I'm really grateful that he's doing this one. Oh my lord, I'm gonna cry because it just reminds me of just dancing with my little guy when he was like two years old, man. It's crazy. Maybe I'm going through withdrawals. You don't even have to do too much. You can turn me on with just a touch. Weekend, don't get me wrong. I can feel my face when I'm with you. But he also wrote, wrote Blinding Light as well. But he don't sound like Tommy. No shade at the weekend at all. I love him. I just, I'm glad he cut his hair. That shit was fucked up. <laughs> like, ooh, come on now, bro. You look crazy. I'm gonna go back a little bit because Tommy, again... He's got those vocals that literally can knock you off your chair. I've done that before, and it hurts. And I don't want to bruise my tailbone and do that. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm holding on for dear life. Amazing. God. I see Sam on top of the 10 days! Yes!
Tommy. <laughs> oh, it brought a damn tear to my eye. What? With the weekend song? Yeah, I'm a mess. No, it's because I'm like, I'm going to see these guys on the 8th of October. Yay! I cannot wait to see Sabaton again. They throw one of the wildest, most amazing metal shows that I've ever been to, man. And I get to share that with my firstborn again. We had a blast the last time. I have to thank Sabaton, especially Pear and Heidi that reached out to me and then invited me and my and my son to that show. It's something I'll never forget. I couldn't afford to go last time and they gifted me. And guess what? As soon as they announced that tour with Epica, my ass was on it. I don't care if I put it on a credit card or not. I was not missing that show, even though it's almost three hours away from me. I don't care. I'll be there. Amazing. What can he not do? That is the question that I'm often left with when I look at Tommy. Like, he can do The Lion King. He could do Disturbed. Well, Simon and Garfunkel, but made famous by Disturbed. And he take he took on The Weeknd. And, and he made it sound amazing. That guitar... It, I felt it in my bones, in my soul. It warmed my soul and his vocals. And then the keyboard. Oh, that was absolutely amazing. I got to throw a like on the video. If you guys would like to see me do more Tommy Johansson, please put the like on the video and leave some comments down below. Did, did this do it? It might not have done this to you because this was special to me. And when my little boy could finally, like, figure out what dancing was, this was one of the very first songs that me and him jammed to. So, all right, you guys. Thank you, Maggie. Love you. And I can't freaking wait 10 more days and I get to see these guys. Yes. All right. I can't wait to buy the shit out of that merch, man. Woo! All right, y'all. Take care. I'm just Jen. See ya. Jeez, oh, Pete's. Oh, my God. Fucking shit, man. I can't believe he's only got 71,000 subscribers. What? What the fuck? You see, like, I, it, that baffles me. I'm like, man, I have, like, that much talent in my bones. And we got people like Tommy, uh, Charlotte Wessels, like, what, what, huh, how? Good Lord, man. That, that really did hit me, man, hard. You know, it's like the League of Distortion song, uh, my revenge, and then and with with like from from the, the the whole stream. Oh my God! You had death. You had uh, the warning Z. You know, you guys requested one hell of a show. The, it was one hell of a comeback show. Wow! And it it just reminded me that everything that I've been through was absolutely worth it. All of that, everything that I endured, it's worth it to me. To be where I am here today, right now. Yeah, I would do it over again. Ten times.
And is it fun having to go through shit like that? No. No, it's not. It's definitely not. But it was 100% worth it to make me who I am today. So, Maggie, good pick. All right, now, Fork Nagore. Fork Nagore. Did I say that right? Fork Nagore. This is called Winter Trice. Fuck, Mike, thanks, man. <laughs> I don't want it to be winter yet, okay? It's now fall. And I'm, I'm, I love the fall. It's my favorite time of year. But I don't like winter. Winter can suck it. For my friend Mike! I've seen this before. I've seen this before, but it's fucking amazing. So we'll play it again for you. I've definitely, I've, I've done this on my channel before, but I, I will do it again. It is badass. Thrice. Thrice. Who came up with that word? What the fuck does thrice mean? Three? I don't even know. Did I say trice? <laughs> Rah. have this on my fucking Apple Music, dude. I think I might. You see something here. Century Media Records. Yeah, I'm already subscribed to these guys. But I'll save it in my live streams because this was... Oh, it already is! Would you look at that? I already thought it was awesome back then. <laughs> it might be an... Actually, I do think I do have it in here. My library. Artists. Fork Nagore, there it is. I do have it. <laughs> Sweet. in the winter time and it fucking blinds you because it's so white you're just like oh, now I know how vampires feel fuck ew like that sun it's like it makes it even brighter out there you're just like oh you're bleaking and what's so beautiful about what I fucking hate winter you guys ew it hurts my bones and everything I fucking hate driving in it especially that first snow because all these assholes seemingly forget that we live in Cleveland. Uh, and we're right on a lake. Lake Erie. And they're like, dur, 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 and they're going too fast. And they're sliding all over the place. And it's like bumper cars all over again. Every fucking year. It's like, dude, do you not realize, dummy? You need to slow the fuck down when it snows. But what I love most about wintertime is looking down at that snow and seeing it looks like diamonds everywhere. That's the one thing I love. Well, and sled riding, of course, and Christmas. But, like, I hope to God Christmas is as good as it was last year, you guys. Because the year before, motherfuckers. I must start saving up right now! Ah! 
about him <laughs> whoops he comes in a, a, that's old man winter for you that's what it feels like on your bones yeah you're like oh motherfucker okay i surrender <laughs> going rah, and you're like eh. <laughs> why do I gotta deal with this and fuck that groundhog on February 2nd if that son of a bitch don't see his shadow and you're like yeah there's six more weeks of this bullshit and but if he does see his shadow then you got this guy's voice coming in and he's like that hope that spring is in the air that it's coming to rescue you from this abyss of coldness and you're just like thank god thank god you're coming oh i fucking can't stand winter time oh my god like his voice is so soothing it's it's spring that growly guy was old man winter and this is spring we had summer and fall in there too but this is definitely a depiction of that how soothing it is and nice and you're like yay hey motherfucker Whee! <laughs> This song made me feel better. <laughs> Nature cast up the future upon the ground of rumbling this song is man it, the first time i seen it i was like god damn that's a fucking metal song and a half like that this is a metal song and a half they get that oh the extra oomph you know like the extra cool factor man this is beautiful it really is and i don't see like sometimes people don't like metal and I'm just like, but wait, don't give up on it just so soon. Because you got bands like this 
that just make it like, oh, yeah, that this is, if there's all metals like this, sign me up. You know what I mean? Good pick, Mike. Oh, he's got such a smooth voice, like, like butter. I guess that fucking damn asshole didn't see a shadow, did he? Here comes winter. <laughs> You're stuck with me, motherfuckers. No. See <laughs> oh no! Stop! Wait! What? How the fuck did I wait? You mother. Ooh, I'm so aggravated right now. Warning, we've... Heads up! We ain't seen this in a minute! We've detected copyright audio. In your stream, your may your stream may be temporarily blocked. It's like the groundhog cock-blocking all of us when we hope that he sees his shadow so we don't have six more weeks of that winter bullshit! Fucking YouTube, man. You don't get me started, YouTube. Don't. I've been such a good girl for so long. Believe me, they don't want to see me all aggravated again and start cursing YouTube out. I'll fake you out. I'll fake you out. <gasps> Nothing to see. I don't know what you're talking about. I play the fifth. I was not playing copyrighted music. I don't know what you're talking about. Where? It's still up there. God damn it. Look, man. They're always trying to get me. They're out to get me. I swear to God. They are. I ain't throwing my friends under the bus, so forget it, YouTube. It was all me. I did it. God, my... Ew! I hate it! I hate having good morals today! Yeah, I did it. I played that song. I pressed the button. I'm guilty. Whatever. Okay, we got an excellent connection. <laughs> Look it. Look. That's what you gotta do. You gotta woman up, or man up, and apologize for your misdeeds. See this little green nubby right there? That is what you get when you own up and say, I guess I did. Fine. Fine. It was me. Yes, I did it. Yes. <laughs> I still hate good morals that they're so stupid. Why do I got to be so honest today? Yeah. I guess I just have to pause it a little bit more. To avoid the copyright cops. Ooh, because you guys gotta ruin all the fun. Because you're fun suckers. Nah, you suck the fun out of everything. Why? Can't you just lighten the fuck up a little bit? And enjoy life? And good music? Oh, that's right. Because you probably like Cardi B the best. That's probably your, your go-to. You probably like songs about summertime. Well, Mike picked this and I'm playing it. I don't care what you say.
Face too, they came out with this song for Christmas. Or, what is that? Um, uh, Yuletide. Yep, it was from Yule. The Yuletide of Yule. What a great fucking song that was. Uh, on to some really bad news, you guys. Coolio has passed away. And... I don't know what the circumstances were, but he was too young to die. Seriously. He gave us amazing songs like the one we're about to play, Gangsta's Paradise. And he was in that movie, Higher Learning, uh, with Michelle Pfeiffer. Well, no, he wasn't. He wasn't in the movie, but the song was. But he had one hell, just amazing video. It was really cool with Michelle Pfeiffer and scenes from the movie. And he did leave, a, he lived a hard life before he became famous, you know. And you got to look at these kids today that don't have the father role models, you know, that are in the inner cities. And moms don't give a shit. They're just letting them run rampant. And the music that they listen to does play a part in that. You know, they, a lot of, of, of rap music talks about selling drugs and fucking bitches and all kinds of of bad things that will only end up with somebody getting fucking killed or thrown in fucking prison. And it's like, you got to feel bad for them, you know, but then you got to say, okay, I feel bad, but you got to do something about that. You know, you got to man up and get out of that kind of lifestyle because look at the rappers today getting killed left and right, robbed of their jewelry and killed like what why why would uh, people do not value people's lives today that's the problem like they have zero fucks to give and it's sad it really is it's like there's no value on human life whatsoever whether it be a baby a, a toddler an old person young people it's like do you not care that this person might have kids that you're leaving up orphaned it's sad because the good people die and the world is left with a bunch of a-holes. Uh, th thank you for picking this, Nathan. I appreciate you. And in memory of Coolio. I loved this song when I was a kid, man. I love this video. And you know what? Let me stop real quick and say... That our, our, our government can spend billions, if not trillions of dollars and sending billions of dollars overseas. But fuck these kids, right? In the uh, With their education ain't shit. Fuck these kids, right? We need to invest in our children's uh, educations so that we have, they have bright futures because they are our future. How is that, how is that like not a fucking thing? How is that not important? Every kid deserves a good education. Every kid. It fucking pisses me off more than you know. You want to tell me what this is all about? As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I take a look at my life and realize there's nothing left Cause I've been blasting and laughing so long that Even my mama thinks that my mind is gone But I ain't never crossed a man that didn't deserve it Me be treated like a punk, you know that's unheard of You better watch how you're talking and where you're walking Or you and your homies might be lying to chalk I really hate the trip, but I got a low they cope, I see myself in the pistol smoke, fool I'm the kind of G the little homies wanna be like On my knees in the night Saying, saying prayers, prayers in, in the, the street, street light And it's really sad that people, you know Our, my generation seen this and appreciated him for his music. And today anymore, you'll have kids laughing at this. 
thinking, oh, dude, this dude is soft, man. It, it, no, man, he's telling truths. He's telling truths like the, this is what you should not be emulating. This is what you should not be looking uh, up to. Bullets don't have names on them. And whether you agree with me or not, guns do not kill people. People kill people. And they have no value for human life. It's really sad. It breaks my fucking heart. At the situation they got me facing I can't live a normal life I was raised by the street So I gotta be down with the hood team Too much television watching Got me chasing dreams I'm an educated fool with money on my mind Got my tin in my hand And a dream in my eye I'm a low-down out gangster, set tripping banker And my homies is down So don't arouse my anger Fool, death ain't nothing but a heartbeat The way I'm living life Do a die. What can I say? I'm 23 now, but will I live to see 24? The way things are going, I don't know. Tell me why are we so blind to see that the ones we hurt are you and me? Like, there, it has to come to an end where people don't give a shit about each other. That has to stop. It's like, I feel like I'm this one person begging for it, and my cries are, are unheard. I wish these kids today would just realize, like Coolio said, death is but a heartbeat away. And there's so many young kids getting killed, man. Like, uh, New Orleans, the city I love so much, it's the murder capital of the United States now. Yeah while its mayor is taking first-class flights all over the place because it's safer. That curtain is much safer. Yeah. Like, come on, man. When When is enough going to be enough? When we wipe all everybody out? Because that's exactly where we're heading. And it's fucking sad. again spend our money and send it away far far away and i get it they needed help too but our kids our children are suffering like these kids they don't have what the kids in the suburbs have they don't 
They don't get the same education. No. Because the funding isn't there. Tell me, why isn't it? Why why do not why why do our politicians, our leaders, why aren't they investing money in ed education for children so that they could become something better than a, a, a chalk line? We can we can help that and we're not and it's it's a never ending cycle. No wonder why people are mad. I get it. And we our our leaders should be doing better, but they're not. They'd rather give the military more weapons and and fight wars that aren't ours to fight. The war that we need to fight is here. Investing in our children, taking care of our veterans. That's what should matter most. But it, it's not. It pisses me off so bad that, that there is opportunity there to fix this. But they won't. Because politicians, oh, I don't care which side. I'm going to say it and I will keep it 100 with you. Either if they're on the left or if they're on the right, either if they're Democrat or Republicans, those politicians get richer while people get poorer. I want to see politicians. I don't give a fuck if you're a Democrat or a rep or or a Republican. I don't care if you say, you know what. We're going to invest in the future of children. We are going to give these children the education that they deserve. Safer streets than, that they deserve. You got my vote. But you had better live up to that promise and don't lie on that campaign trail like they all fucking do. Every one of them. It's like... So I can't be sitting here and pretending that one side is better than the other because they're not. They don't do shit. We need to invest in the future of our children, period, point blank. Quit pushing this woke ideology bullshit down their throats and give them the tools necessary to succeed in life. For fuck's sakes, it don't matter if the teachers are gay. Who cares? Like I said earlier, we didn't even know about that when we were kids. It shouldn't be brought up. It's almost like if you have a bad day at home and you go to work and clock in, those problems don't exist there. But we got teachers pushing this shit, this woke agenda, down the throats of our children, brainwashing them, indoctrinating them, when we should be preparing them for a brighter future to make them graduate. Give them those tools. Teach them again. And we got people like Coolio. Now he's gone. I'm glad this song is as popular as it is because it sheds light. All right, you guys. Sometimes I feel like I'm only one person. I'm one human being. And I want to change things. I want things to change so badly. But in order for that to happen, people have to open their eyes and set aside their differences. We all bleed red. Every last one of us. No matter where you're from, we're all human. And I, I hope you're right, Hawk. I hope it's not too late. But I'm really great. I'm I'm grateful that people are starting to see it and, and say, okay, enough is enough. But we need to invest in our future. These children of today 
they are our future. Because when we're dead and gone, we can't have people running around creating chaos and wreaking havoc and killing one another. We can't have that. Or else there's going to be nobody left to guide future generations. God, I, I wish that I can get this out to millions of people. I wish that they'd hear it. I wish that they can see somebody who's had enough and wants better. Oh, what a very emotional stream. <laughs> very emotional. It's okay to be passionate about stuff like that. And it's okay to agree to disagree. We shouldn't all agree on everything anyways. That would mean, guess what we're stuck with? Vanilla ice cream. Just hamburgers. Maybe hot dogs. We should celebrate diversity and embrace it. Not shun it. And I see a lot of that today in the media, on YouTube, online, on social media. I got rid of TikTok because there is so much hatred on there. I couldn't stand it no more. And I really enjoyed funny TikToks and dance videos and and paranormal videos and shit like that. But it got way too racist for me and I had to go, man. And it's openly acceptable. Only if it's racism against Caucasians. And I had to, I had, I couldn't watch it. Because, like, not all white people are bad. I'm sure I've ran into a couple assholes in my day, but that don't mean every one of them is bad. Just like the police. Just because a few of them are bad doesn't mean all of them are. All right, y'all. I will, uh, I think I'm streaming tomorrow because I haven't been able to stream <laughs> at all. And it is my, uh, my pleasure to be able to. So, all right, y'all. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a great birthday, Dominic Gabriel 1. I hope you all have a great day. And I hope you, uh, I thank you guys for joining me today. You guys could have been somewhere else, but you weren't. You were here, so. I love you all. Thank you, moderators. You're the best. And you guys, I'll see you uh, tomorrow. I love you guys.